John. These students from Birmingham, Alabama and Los Angeles, California are collaborating with their professional heroes on live TV. We had some questions on this, Lenny, because he's getting comments. We kind of wanted to get your take on it, okay? Part of an innovative program called Acme Animation, this twice-a-month teleconference offers students instant feedback on their animation projects from some of the top pros in the business. This is something that we used to keep in mind at Disney a lot. If we had a character like this, a side view could show that really nicely. Now, we have the Acme animation, animation program was you know founded I mean? in 1996. Yeah. Teacher Dave Master realized that the evolution of new technologies could transform the teaching of the art form, but his initial efforts met with resistance. We came into schools that didn't have computer technology, uh, and if they did have it, they didn't want to use it for the arts. They were using it in computer classes. The arts have been considered a frill, even though arts and entertainment is the second largest export of the United States right now, and it's a multi, multi-billion dollar industry, and that there are so many jobs and so many ancillary fields in the arts. Okay, well, we're really impressed by your clear poses. You made us laugh over here. That's great. And usually that's what we're really part. trying to do is get kids to understand that there are many ways to communicate. There are studies that show from 80 to 90 percent of most people's information comes off of screens, whether it be computer screens or TV screens or movie screens. We're trying to get kids to not just be consumers of that, but to be educated consumers of that kind of material and also at the same time, creators of their own material. We weren't sure if we should add something. Every other Tuesday, Acme mentors gather at various studio sites and are connected to schools across the country via teleconferencing gear that includes digital projectors and laptops to run animation sequences. Okay, you're going to have to make that clear so the audience will understand it. because you don't We have principles in animation that over the last hundred years have been developed that enable a student, if they learn them, to better convey their creative ideas. To learn these principles takes time, so it goes from a bouncing ball, which has about 80% of all the physical principles and timing that a student will ever have to learn in their entire history, and it's all wrapped up in that little ball, bouncing and squashing and stretching with inertia at the top and slowing down, decreasing speed, increasing speed. Okay. All of the then, things that they're gonna do when they create characters and whole films, are all wrapped up in that little bouncing ball that they learn in the beginning when they start. So the design principles and the composition principles and the principles of good storytelling, music, are all brought into animation. To progress in the course, Acme students must demonstrate their grasp of basic animation principles in exercises like the bouncing ball, the leaf drop, and the brick fall. Very good, that's excellent. Another thing you might do is have the brick teeter at the top before it falls. See, what you, what you do in animation is you set people up for what they're about to see, then you give them what you set them up for. Since not every new animation student can participate in live teleconferences, Acme has adapted their mentoring model to the web. And the student will put their file in here, and they do a little bit of an explanation about what they were trying to do. Now. Anyone, anywhere in the world, can upload their work and get answers to their specific questions. And she wants to know, are the poses and timing working well? And, you know, what, what else should she fix? Jennifer Carden Klein learned animation in one of Dave Master's high school classes. Now, as a professional animator and mentor, she's helping others along the career path. What do you think about the overlap? Animation really is a craft and Unless you have a mentor-student relationship, you really cannot fully learn that craft. And that's how I learned my craft. That's how all the best animators that I know and best filmmakers that I know learn their craft. So for me to get in the position as a mentor and be able to pass on what I know to a student is incredibly rewarding. I actually give them a step-by-step -step kind of guide as to how they might be able to fix their own scene. In addition to written responses, mentors like James Lopez can upload their own sketches. You know, animation is such a visual medium, you can't really just type out what you want to convey in text. You have to do it visually, I, I think. And so I will actually, um, you know, draw it all out. You know, as simple as I can do it. 
And, you know, it's like they say, a picture says a thousand words, you know? Harry, this right here is just a little polishing that you have to do. To get exposure to professionals that can tell you the reason things are happening, that can express the potentials and the principles behind things happening. If I had something like that when I was a child, it would have meant the world to me. A privilege to actually have someone that's working with Walt Disney and other companies like uh, Wonder Brothers and all those cool companies to actually take their time out and help us with our artwork. And uh, it's actually helping me in my uh, science classes with all the uh, bone structures and uh, different types of bones we have to learn. Okay, so you're showing us your character designs? Mm, yeah. Now, the type of character you've got there, kind of like a high school bad boy, he's going to put all his weight on one leg, right? Probably cross his arms cock his head to one side and give us a little bit of an attitude. Educators see benefits of the ACME program that go beyond learning how to draw. If it looks like this, a circle they seem to um, do better when they know they're preparing work that professional people um, will look, take a look at and give them comment on. So it's very helpful in the classroom. Also, um, working toward deadlines. In their personal lives, I think that it's really affected them that they know the urgency of a deadline. It's matured them in that sense, that they know when I put my work out here, this represents me. Tilt it this way a little bit. There you go. All right. I think any time a kid is interested in something at school, there's some draw for him that he or she really wants to be a part of. I think they start taking a little bit more responsibility for their own action. They show a little bit more initiative. They don't want to miss school. And they develop their language skills, their technology skills, even their math skills. And sure, that has a spillover effect. We have students doing mathematics projects. We have students doing historical projects, literature projects. Animation is a vehicle to get across the major ideas, the big ideas of our civilization, of our world. Okay, we'll go to Carver High School in Alabama. We have made it possible that a professional can spend a few minutes a week to actually mentor a kid somewhere in a distant city who had the same dream they did and has no opportunity without that mentorship. And really, that's the magic of this new technology. For more information on what works in public education, go to edutopia.org.